In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve first order differential equations that are separable. Uh, and I'm going to do so by showing you how to use the method of separation of variables to solve these types of equations. Let's start with a, a number of examples uh, in order to show the process. Now, you see here, I'm going to start with a very simple example. Uh, y prime equals x squared over y. Okay, now the goal in the method of separation of variables is to get the x's on one side of the equation and the y's on the other. So we know that, d, that y prime is really short for dy by dx. How does y change with x? So what we're going to do is we're going to say dy by dx equals x squared over y. And so our goal is uh, to get the x's and y's on both sides uh, separated so that we can integrate. See, most methods for solving first order uh, and second order and uh, differential equations rely on integration. Okay, so you see the dx must be in the numerator, okay, in order to be able to integrate. You can't integrate uh, a function with respect to 1 over dx, it, that doesn't make any sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by dx. And so when I multiply uh, dx here, if I put a dx here, then we're going to cancel, right? So let me just make it nice and simple and say that dy equals uh, right here x squared over y dx. So I want to get I want to get y here over to the other side. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by y. Okay. And so this is going to cancel. I'm going to rewrite it nicely here. y dy is equal to x squared dx. Okay. So now we have we've achieved separation, right? This is the separation of variables method. And so the idea is to have, you know, uh, all the, the y's on one side, x is on the other, so now we can, so that we can uh, integrate both sides. Okay, so when we integrate, um, I'm going to just show you all the gory details of the integration just to make sure that it's clear because later on uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to become uh, something that you want to keep in mind. So when we integrate y dy, we get, it's y to the 1, right? So it becomes y to the 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus some constant C, C1, okay? Because this is an indefinite integral, okay? They're both indefinite integrals, so there is a constant of integration, okay? So now here we have x. Now it's 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 plus some constant because it's an indefinite integral, okay? And so what we can do is we can collect these constants, I'm going to move C1 over to the right-hand side of the equation. So what it becomes here is y squared over 2 is equal to x to the 3 over 3 plus, we'll say C0. Okay, and, and so C0 here is C2 minus C1. Okay, according to what we have. Now you can leave it like this, or if you like, we can multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So then you get y squared, right, is equal to uh, 2 over 3, x to the 3, plus, I'll call it c, where c here is equal to 2 c naught. Okay, you can, we can leave it like this, or you can take the root of both sides. Th this is a uh, a good solution. Okay, this is a um, a nice way to show the, the the solution. All right. So again, just to summarize, the method of separation of variables, the goal is to be able to integrate, right? And so to put the equation in a form that you can integrate in order to solve uh, the differential equation in terms of y. And what we do, because integration is simpler when you have um, all y's or all x's in the integral, uh, all of the same variable being integrating, then that's what that's the goal in this method. Okay, so what are we going to do next? I'm, I'm going to clear this. I'm going to show you some 
I mean, basically show you some more examples of this method. So let's look at uh, yet another example. So let me call this example number B. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to go through a number of examples to, to get you comfortable with this technique. So we have dy by dx equals 4xy. Okay, so again, we want to get x's on one side and y's on the other, but the dx's and the dy's must be in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring y to one side, so I'm going to go 1 over y uh, dy, so I'm going to bring this y over to the left-hand side, is equal to 4x dx. Now I've achieved separation, so now I integrate both sides, and the integral of 1 over y dy is ln magnitude of y, okay, plus some constant of integration, okay, and that is equal to, okay, for x to the 1 plus 1, so that's 2 over 2 plus c2, okay, so this is going to cancel, become a 2, all right, so what we have, if I collect constants together, I have ln of y is equal to 2x squared plus c, let's call it c naught, okay? So where c naught equals c2 minus c1, okay? Now, we could leave it in this form if we like, or we could solve for y explicitly. Both would be uh, a good solution. Either, either way is fine. But how do we solve for y? So ln is base e. So well, wait, if you remember, ln is base e. Here's an a, and it equals some b. So what, what that means is that e to the b equals a. So e to the b is a. So what we're saying is that y, or we could say magnitude y for now if you want, is equal to e to the 2x squared plus c naught. Okay? But look, what, what, what is this? Well, this is e to the 2x squared times e to the c naught. Well, this e to the c naught is just a constant, right? This is just some other constant. We'll call it c. So at the end of the day, we have that y is e is c, e to the 2x squared. Well, c can be positive or negative, so we can just say that y is equal to c, e to the 2x squared. Okay. So th this solution or this solution or this solution are valid solutions for this differential equation. Okay, let's Let's look at another example. Okay, uh, we'll call this example C. So we have x, y, dx, okay, uh, plus x squared plus 1 dy equals 0. And we have to separate the variables. So what I could do is I could go in here and say x, y, dx equals, and then to just take the negative of the terms that are by dy. And i got to bring the y to the right-hand side and the x is to the left-hand side. So I have x, I have dx. I'm going to divide by uh, x squared plus 1 both sides by x squared plus 1. And I'm also going to divide both sides by y. So I'm going to keep the negative, 1 over y, okay? And then I have dy, okay? So I divided, I got rid of the y from the left-hand side by dividing both sides uh, by y. And I got rid of the x squared plus 1 from the right-hand side by dividing both sides by x squared plus 1. Okay, so now I've, I've separated the variables. I have achieved separation, right? And so now uh, integrating both sides is going to be, okay, uh, what I do next. Okay, so here on the left-hand side, okay,
okay, you can see that the numerator is approximately the derivative of the denominator of the x squared plus 1. So this is a prime candidate for u substitution. So when we do u substitution, we, we choose, uh, we say, okay, I push the button here. So uh, let u equal, and we have to choose, right? And we're going to say x squared plus 1. Now, the reason why we chose this is because if you take the derivative of u, what you get is you get 2x, okay? And if you multiplied both sides by dx, Okay, because we, we wanna we wanna replace we wanna replace this x dx with a du. Okay, some some number that's related to du. So what we get is we multiply both sides by the dx. Okay, this is gonna cancel. And what you get is you get that du is two x dx. Now our goal is to replace Everything on the right side of these equations, so the x squared plus 1, is going to be replaced in, in this equation. Okay, So we need, we need to know what is x dx in terms of u. Well, we have 2x dx is du. So if we divide both sides of the equation by du, okay, then we can replace everything from the right-hand side of this equation with everything in the left-hand side of this equation over here uh, on the left hand side of this equation. So x dx is 1 half du. So let's put the integral in. Okay, x dx, we're going to put the 1 half on the outside, du. Okay, and then we have the 1 over, and x squared plus 1 we said was u. Okay, and then we have negative 1 over y dy. But you can see here, look. The integral of 1 over u du, or, or 1 over y dy, that's ln. So we have 1 half ln magnitude of u. Okay. Now, this is an indefinite integral, so we're going to have some constant okay, from that integration. And then uh, we have the negative. We can't, can't get rid of that. We have 1 over y, which is ln magnitude of y plus C2. Now I could I could apply you know the negative to, to, to all of this if you like. It doesn't really matter because this C um, can be positive or negative, but I'll, I'll keep it like that for now. All right, so what do we have? We have really negative ln y minus C2. So let's let's do that. Let's just leave it in here. Apply it directly. It's not going to matter anyway, the sign of C2. So look, and now I'm going to collect my constants. I can get rid of this here. Okay, so I'm going to say 1 half. Now u is what? Well, it's x squared plus 1. So we have ln of x squared plus 1 is equal to negative ln of y plus, right? And then we're going to say, you know, negative c2 minus c1. I'm going to call this right now just c, okay? So I'm going to I'm going to erase this right now. Just call it c. It's just some some constant, okay? All right. So that is a perfectly valid solution, right? Uh, we could, if we want, solve explicitly for y, if we're interested in that, okay? So let's let's go and see what, what we can do here. So let's swap sides, okay? For Let's swap ln y and x just to keep things. So we're basically saying ln of y is equal to negative 1 half ln of x squared plus 1, okay? Plus some constant. Actually, let's call this C0, because you know what's going to happen next is this is ln, it's base E, okay? So what we're really saying here is that the magnitude of Y is equal to E to whatever's on the other side, right? So it's E to the negative one-half ln 
x squared plus 1 plus c naught, right? And, and we did this before. Well, that is, okay, let's just, I'm going to, I'll deal with this in a second. I'll show you how this simplifies, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave that there. This is the same thing as e to the c naught, right? Times e to the c naught, right? Because when you, uh, e to the a plus b is equal to e to the, sorry, e to the a plus, sorry, times. Let's move this over a little bit. It's e to the a times e to the b. Okay, so that's the rule we're going by here. And so, well, this is just some other constant. We'll just call it c. So really, what we're saying is that it's c e to the negative one half ln x squared plus one. Okay, so now here's a couple of rules that we gotta remember. A ln b is the same thing as ln of b to the a. So right away, we can convert this guy, okay, into c e to the ln of x squared plus one to the negative one half. Okay, so that's good. That's a good start. Okay, so this really is just something, right? Th this equals something. Okay, now I want to show you something else. So th this is just we could just call this some 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 variable z if we if you really want to. Look, let's just call this z. Okay, let's make this nice and simple. So it's c e to the ln of z. Okay. Well, what's that? Well, what what's this e to the ln of z equal to? Well, look, if you look at just the ln, okay. Uh, ln is base e, okay? So e to the, you see this box here? So e, this e, base e, to this box equals z, okay? So this base e to whatever's inside this box equals z, whatever ln of z is, right? So e to whatever ln of z is, okay, equals z, because they're, they're inverse of each other. However, that's the same exponent for this e. So this e and this e share this box. So e to the box is z. Therefore, e to the this box equals z. Okay? So what we're saying, that, that goes here. So e to the ln of z equals z. So this becomes c. Well, no, no longer e. It's just it's just z. Okay. Well, what's z? Well, z is what we said. It's up here. It's this it becomes c magnitude of x squared plus one to the one half. And and we said this was this was magnitude of y. Well, really, because c can be any number, right? It can be negative or positive. Well, we could just say that it's y. Okay, as soon as we have this c, we could really just convert to what? Because c can be positive uh, or it can be a negative. Okay, y, y could be a positive or negative, really, at the end of the day. But because c is, is any value, we can just simplify it. Okay, uh, let's see here. So uh, that, that is basically what we have, is we have that, and this number here, okay, this x squared, magnitude of x squared plus one, well, x can never be, okay, it can never be negative. So this, this uh, will never be, will never be negative. So we can even get rid of that, uh, that magnitude, okay? So y can be positive or negative. This is basically defines a family of curves, right? This is because the c is unknown, this is the general solution, right? We, we don't know what c is, so this is a general solution. Okay? Because we don't know something. This defines a family of curves. Okay? Uh, and we don't know which curve is, is the, our particular solution. If we knew c, right, then we would have a particular solution. 
because we don't know what C is, we have a general solution. How would you figure out what your particular solution is? Well, you need a point on the specific curve that defines Y in terms of X. Okay, what curve you're on. And usually that means you need an initial condition. Right? You need some, some point, some data point for which curve you're actually on. All right. Well, let's, let's actually do that. Let's do a problem where we're given an initial condition. So let's go in and clear the canvas. Okay. And here, what I'm going to show you is here's a differential equation. So I'm going to start. This is example D. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, we're going to have a differential equation 2y. 1 plus x squared uh, dy dx plus x, 1 plus y squared equals 0. However, in this problem, we have an initial condition that y, when x is 0, is 2. Okay, So this is a point on the curve. It's really the point. It's the point 0, 2. That's what it is. It's saying that the point zero two is on the curve that is the solution to the differential equation that we have here. Remember, the solution to a differential equation is an equation, right? It's it's a curve. So okay. So first thing, uh, we're gonna we're this whole video is on separation of variables, right? We're gonna solve by uh, separation of variables because uh, this is. This uh, equation is separable. Not all equations are, but uh, many of them are. So what we're going to do is we're going to okay, put everything on two sides of an equation. So 1 plus x squared. We'll have our dy by dx. We're going to say equals negative x, 1 plus y squared. Okay. And so uh, we can't have dx's in the denominator if we're going to integrate. So we need to multiply both sides of the equation by dx. I'm going to do that right now uh, and get rid of this dx. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I need the dx's or the x's on the right hand side. So I got to take this guy out of, out of both equations. Oops, one plus x squared. Okay. So this guy is going to go. Okay. And I got to bring you see, 1 plus y squared, i got to bring to the other side. So if I divide it by 1 plus y squared here, i got to do the same thing on this side. So cancel, cancel, leave that there. And now I'm, I'm good to go because I have y's on the left-hand side. Here, I'll rewrite it so that it's nice. 2y over 1 plus y squared dy. It's negative x over 1 plus x squared uh, dx. Okay? All right. So uh, now I've achieved separation, right? So now I can integrate. So I'll integrate both sides. Now, this, uh, this uh, integral, what it looks like is the numerator is approximately the derivative of the denominator. Right? So this is a prime candidate for u substitution. Right? So if we say on this side, let, okay, we're going to need a u1 and a u2. Here, I'll say u and v. So let u equal um, 1 plus y squared. So du by dy, the derivative, what, what does it look like? Well, that is 2y. Okay, so that means that if we multiply both sides of this equation by dy, and then that cancels. So du is 2y dy. Okay. So we look look at uh, uh, look whatever you see on the right hand side here. We can replace uh, with the left hand side of this equation in our integral. Right. So we have u. So let's go up here. I'm gonna just do. Do this. Do this. This integral first. This be, this integral becomes. Let's see what happened here. It becomes uh, so two y dy is just the du. Okay, so I can sub that in, and then the one plus y squared goes there. Okay, and then now I got to do the right the right hand side of this equation. So if I say let, I don't know. Let's call this v for just another variable. Let v equal 
1 plus x squared. So dv by dx, the derivative, is just 2x. Okay. If I multiply both sides by dx, this cancels. So that means that dv is 2x dx. Now, the, now we want to replace uh, everything on the right-hand side of these equations, the v equals 1 plus x squared and dv, with everything on the left-hand side. Now, we got to look at the integral. So in the integral, we have x dx. Okay, So here we have 2x dx. Well, I want to be able to replace directly. So I'm going to divide both sides here by 2. And now I have uh, 1 half of d. Well, here, uh, I'm, it's, it's basically done here. I'm going to do that. Make some space. Okay, so here I have uh, x dx is 1 half dv. Okay, so I can replace directly. So here I'm going to bring this equation back down under here. I'm going to keep the negative and this becomes, so x dx becomes dv and the 1 plus x squared becomes 1 over v. Okay, so now what we have is uh, we have these two equations which we can solve very easily. The integral of 1 over u du uh, is ln magnitude of u plus, because it's an indefinite integral, plus c1 is equal to negative ln of v uh, plus c2. Okay, And we can always sub back in our u and v, so that becomes ln magnitude of 1 plus y squared plus c1 is equal to negative ln, and v is just 1 plus x squared plus c2, and we can, uh, if we want, collect our constants together on the right-hand side. So I like to do it like this. Um, plus c, we'll call it c0. Okay, and c0 is just c2 minus c1. Okay. All right, uh, we, can, we can simplify this equation. So this is like negative 1 ln of, uh, uh, of 1 plus x squared. So remember, uh, a ln b is the same thing as ln of b to the a. And here, in this case, a is negative 1. So what we could do is we could say this is ln of 1 plus x squared to the negative 1 plus c naught. Okay? Okay, and that's that's basically uh, that's basically it. We can uh, we can do that. Now, did I miss something? Oh, you know what I missed? One thing that I missed up here was so x dx in the equation here is actually one half dv. So I've, I'm missing a one half here. Okay, uh, so. Really, what that means is that this is one half. This would be a one half. Okay, I, I made a little mistake on that one, but it's okay. We're going to fix it. Uh, so this is one half. Again, the constants. I I could, I could make it one half. C two. It's not really going to make a difference here. It's still just a constant. Uh, so at the end of the day, just looking at that, I missed that one part. Uh, let's go back here. So the the actual uh, final uh, solution, okay, is is shown here. Okay, we we could have left it in terms of we could have also left it as negative one half ln one plus x squared, okay, plus c naught. Okay, and that's also valid. They're they're equivalent solutions. Okay, uh, now if we're going to um, if we're going to remember I said at the beginning was that we are given so so we have right here uh, let's use this one for let's use let's use this this last solution here this is the general solution so a general solution. It, it defines a family of curves, right? If you have 
you know, you have here's a curve, here's a curve. This is a family of 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 possible curves. Okay, and if you have one point, okay, we have the point zero two. Okay, so we have the point when x is zero, y is two. And we're saying that that is that lies on our curve. Then that identifies the particular curve that we're on. And so, when you know the particular curve, you know the the particular solution, right? If you know the particular curve, then well, the solution is a curve, so it's a particular solution. Okay. I'm not sure that exactly what the curve looks like. We have a bunch of lawns. But I'm just showing you in general. Here's y and here's x. Okay. So, all right. So now what we need to do is, if we want to know what the particular solution is, we got to solve for c naught. Okay. So let's go in. And what we're told is that when y is 0, or when x is 0, y is 2. Sorry. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to plug into our general solution. So we're going to say ln. Okay, when when y is y is two, so we're going to put x being zero and y being two, and see what c naught comes out to be. So it becomes one plus two squared is equal to negative one half ln of one plus zero, so magnitude one plus c naught. Okay, well e to something equals one, right? And that's what this is going to be. Well, e to the only e to the zero, right? E to the zero is equal to one. So e to the so that means that that's what the ln of one is. So ln of one must be zero. So this whole term goes away. So that means that c naught is ln of one plus two squared is ln magnitude five. Okay. So the particular solution is you take the general solution and you 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 add c naught or c or whatever you want to call it. So we say ln. So the the final particular solution is ln of five, and this is the particular solution. Okay. Now you don't have. We don't have to. We we could if we want. We could solve for uh, y or y squared. But I think that's that's enough for for this. This is a good place to stop. Okay. All right. Let's take a look just uh, at another at another example here. Let's go here. Clear the canvas, and we're gonna just make just keep it simple and summarize now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, all right, this is one example, E. Say y squared dy plus x squared dx equals zero. Okay, and we're going to just go back and summarize again. We want to, we want to put uh, x's and y's on, on uh, both sides of the equation, so we have y squared dy separated is negative x squared dx. And now we can integrate both sides. Well, the integral of y squared is y to 3 over 3 uh, plus c1 negative, And this becomes x to the 3 over 3. I say plus c2. We could also say minus because this negative applies there if we like. Okay, and then we can collect our constants if we like. So y to the 3 over 3 is equal to negative x to the 3 over 3. And then plus, now I'm going to just collect this one into a c naught, right? c1 and c2, where c, c naught is just negative c2 minus c1. Okay, but I can multiply both sides of this equation by 3. And so that gives me y to the 3 equals negative x to the 3 plus c, where c is equal to 3 c naught. Okay. So this is this is a, a perfectly valid solution to the differential equation. Okay, so that was just a simpler one to show you. 
All right, let's clear the canvas here. And I'm going to show you another, just one last example of a simple case of separating the variables. And then I'm going to show you uh, another another way of doing things. OK, so let's do uh, another example here. So we're going to say x, y, dy by dx plus 1 plus y squared to the 1 half equals 0. OK, so separate the variables. So what we want to do is we want to bring, so say x, y, dy, dx is negative 1 plus y squared to the 1 half. Okay, and we want to bring the y's and the x's onto the same side of the equation. So I'm going to, I have to multiply both sides by dx. That, that's my first move because dx can never be in the denominator. Our end goal is to integrate. So if I multiply both sides by dx, this guy's going to get canceled out. I'm just going to erase him here. Okay, and then uh, I want to bring the x, this x, over to this side of the equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by, if I divide both sides by x here, they're going to cancel. So I'm going to take that one out. So I have y dy. So the only thing I have left is this guy right here. Uh, so I'm going to divide by 1 plus y squared on both sides. So divide by 1 plus y squared. This guy is going to go. This guy is going to go. So at the end of the day, what I have is I have y over 1 plus y squared. I have dy is equal to negative 1 over x dx. Separation has been achieved. Okay. Again, the, the differential equation has to be separable in order to do this. Um, some of them are not. You can't, you can't separate. Anyway, once you've separated, we can now integrate. That's how we solve uh, first order differential equations. And look, the left hand side, you've got your, you know, the, the numerator looks to be related to the derivative of the denominator. And that's what we want because we want a du to be the derivative of, of u. So we're going to say let u, this is a u sub, uh, be uh, 1 plus y squared. Okay, so that means that du by dy is 2y. And if we multiply both sides by dy, we can cancel. And we have that du is 2y dy. But we have y dy. Okay, so what we want is we want, because we're going to replace everything on the right hand side of these equations with what's on the left hand side. So, really, what we have is if I erase this. If I divide both sides by 2, okay, I'm going to go 1 half here. Okay, if I divide both sides by 2, then we have y dy on the right hand side, okay, and is 1 half du. Okay, and so we can sub this directly in to our equation. So, our, what does our equation become? Well, our, our integral here. It becomes, uh, so y dy, we have a 1 half du. And we have what we have left is the 1 plus y squared to replace with u. So 1 over u. And that is equal to negative integral 1 over x dx. All right, so now what we can do is we can say that this is 1 half, okay, ln magnitude of u plus c1. Now c1 is going to be multiplied by the 1 half, but it's just a constant, so I don't really have to worry about that. And then this is negative ln of x plus, this could be a, this could be a negative as well, but it's, it's just an arbitrary constant. So I'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, and then I can collect these, these constants into a, into a single constant. So I have 1 half ln, uh, let me see something here. Uh, I gotta, I'm going to sub in u right now. Ln of, and u was 1 plus y squared. Okay, I'll leave the magnitude here, sorry. Okay. Uh, 
is equal to negative ln x plus some some constant, uh, we'll say c naught. Okay. All right. Um, so what what can we do? Well, let me see something here. Did I make one mistake? Yes, I did. I forgot the one half. So this changes something. So if you make a mistake like this, well, you just like me. <laughs> um, everybody can make mistakes. Okay, so I forgot. See, that this changes everything. Okay, you can make a simple mistake. So because of the one half, okay, what I chose, uh, you was correctly chosen. However, what I have here is, uh, let's see. I have, maybe it's best to simply, let me see here. So this is a good, a good way to, to see if somebody, if you make a mistake somewhere, uh, it could really affect your result. So let's go over here. Oops. What I should do is, does this going to let me, yeah. Okay. Let's remove that whole section and start from this point. Okay. So again, everybody makes mistakes. So it's good to show where you can make mistakes. So this one half, we're, st we're still going to do this the same way. So let u equal 1 plus y squared. Okay. So du by dy is really just 2y. And if you multiply both sides by dy, then this cancels. Okay, so du is y dy, or sorry, 2y dy, but we have y dy. So we want to divide by 2. And then we can cancel here. And so what we have is we have y dy, which is here, no problem. Uh, we have one half u, okay? So which which is fine. We can sub this into our equation. And on the right hand side, we have the one over x, which we can we can do simply. So let's go in and sub in u into the left hand side, the equation. So we have y dy is one half of du. But we have the 1 plus y squared, oh sorry, 1 plus y squared to the 1 half. Well, that's 1 over u to the 1 half. Okay. And then here we have negative, uh, the result of the integral of 1 over x dx is ln of x. Plus I could take away, I could make it negative c, but we'll leave it like that. We'll make this one c2. Now here's the part, I have to be a little bit careful. Um, so 1 over u to the 1 half, okay? So, we, okay, I'm going to put the 1 half in here, okay? But this is the integral. This is like u to the negative 1 half du. Okay, I'll just continue ln negative x plus c2. Well, look, just be careful when you do this, uh, this in, uh, integral here. The result is u. Remember, we start with the number, we add 1, and then the exponent, you take the exponent again and put that in the denominator. Okay? That is, okay, we'll put the 1 half. And then because it's a indefinite integral, we need to add a constant of integration. Okay? Just remember, uh, if this is confusing to you, integral of... Uh, Let's go x to the n dx becomes x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus some constant. Okay, that's the, so n in this case is negative 1 half. Okay, so just make sure that that's clear. Okay, is equal to negative ln 
magnitude of x plus c2. Okay, so see how easy it is to make uh, mistakes. All right, so here, uh, let, let's simplify this. This is one half, okay? And then we have, okay, uh, this becomes u to the one half over one half, right? This becomes u to the positive one half over one half. Well, dividing by, by one half is like multiplying by two, right? So if I was to take this out and just put a two here, well, then that cancels with that guy, okay? And okay, the one half does apply to the C1. You, you could leave the, the C1 in here is equal to negative log x plus I didn't really care too much. The, the, the absolute value, because these are arbitrary, I can collect them and bring them uh, on the right-hand side and just call it C. All right, so we have u to the 1 half. Well, what was u? Well, u was 1 plus y squared. So let me plug that back in. So what I have here is 1 plus y squared plus, okay, 1 half C1. I'm, I'm going to bring that over to the other side. So it's 1 plus y squared to the 1 half. So make sure I don't miss that. Is equal to negative ln magnitude x plus, now here I'm going to collect c1s and c2s under just c0. Okay. And that will be, I'll stop there. That's, that's a perfectly valid form for the general solution. Okay, uh, the next question is going to lead us into the next topic, which I'll show in a, in a separate video, on another way to solve uh, first-order differential equations. And first, I'm going to show you how to solve it using separation of variables, and then I'm going to show you uh, how it's solved using another method called integrating combinations as just an, uh, an, an introduction to the next video. So here is the differential equation. It's a, it's a really simple, so we have, sorry, y dx, okay, uh, is equal, or sorry, plus, I'll say x dy is equal to zero. Okay, so this is my differential equation. I can, I'm gonna solve first by separating uh, the variables. Okay, so I have y, dx equals negative x dy. And then what I have to do is bring the x's to the left-hand side. So what that means, I'm going to divide both sides by x and y. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here the x's are going to cancel. Here the y's are going to cancel. And so what I have is I have 1 over x dx is equal to negative 1 over y dy. Okay, and so now I've separated, separation is achieved, and now I can integrate. This becomes ln negative of x, okay, plus c1, negative ln magnitude of y, plus, I can say plus or minus c2. It doesn't matter because I'm going to collect these two together. So let me put the y on the other side. Let's say ln of y okay, is equal to negative ln of x plus some constant c naught. Okay, this is one solution, right? This is, this is a valid solution, or we could solve directly for y explicitly, right? So what this is, this is ln base e, so that means that y is e to the negative ln of x plus c naught, and we said that well, that's the same thing as e to the negative ln of x times e to the c naught, which is the same. This is just a constant. So that's the same thing as, and now because it's c, e to the negative ln of x, well, this is just y because this can be positive or negative. Okay. All right. And it's a family of curves. So that captures everything. Okay, so let's see here. What do we do next? Well, look, remember E, 
Okay, uh, let's do the first part. The, the, the exponent. This negative is like negative 1. So it's like a ln b equals ln of b to the a. So this guy becomes c e to the ln x to the negative 1. Okay, but we saw this already, right? e to the, let's say, ln of, and we said this was a. And then that this this equals something, right? Ln a equals something. It equals the box. Well, that's e to the box is equal to a. Well, this this e is to the same box, so this must just equal a. So uh, a in this case, in the case we have, is x to the negative one. So this is just c times magnitude of x to the negative one. Well, look, c can be positive or negative, so we don't really care about this magnitude. It's just x to the negative one. Okay, um, and so what we have is c over x. y equals c, uh, c over x. Okay, all right, so that is a solution. Now, what I'm going to show you, this is just going to be an introduction to, uh, to, the next, uh, to the next topic. Another way to solve um, is using a, a technique uh, called integrating combinations. Okay, so we're going to have the same here. I'm going to start with y. I'm going to leave this. So it's it, y is c over x. The, the solution is y equals c over x. Okay, and I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to show you another way to do this problem. All right, let's delete this. Okay, the, the way to do this problem, to think about this problem, is that Let's go here. If you consider the product rule, okay, consider the product rule. What is the derivative of x and y by dx? So this is one function, this is another function, right? Well, it's x prime y plus y prime x. This is product rule, right? Just from the product rule. Okay, well, that's that's fine. Well, what is x prime? Well, x prime is just dx by dx times y, right? Plus, what's y, what's y prime? Well, that's dy by dx x. And this is dxy by dx. Okay. Now, if I was to multiply both sides of this equation by dx, okay, so if I multiply by both sides of the equation by dx, then what happens is this dx goes, okay, uh, this, th this is already canceled out, but I'm multiplying the y by the dx, so this is dx, uh, and then I'm multiplying this by dx, so what happens is this dx and this dx cancel, so they're gone. And so what I get is that the derivative of x times y, or dxy actually, is the same thing as y dx plus x dy. Holy cow, look, uh, that, this, and this are the same, right? So when we go to solve differential equations with, you know, when we saw separation of variables, the goal was to be able to integrate. So if we start with that problem, we have y dx, that's the differential equation here. y dx plus x dy is equal to zero. Well, we can, we can simplify with the left-hand side of this equality. So y dx plus x dy, this becomes di x y equals zero. Now look, we want to, We can solve by integrating both sides of the equation. Now, the integral of di x y is x y. If you don't, if you find that to be uh, hard to swallow, well, it's di x y plus the c because it's an, an indefinite integral. But if that's hard for you to see, that di x y. Okay, what, what is this integral? Well, what you could do is you could say, let 
I don't know, pick something. Let u equals x, y. Okay, so then what we have is integral of du. It's not a u substitution, but what's the integral of du? Well, that's just u, right? And so, well, when you sub u as x, y back in, you get x, y. Well, integral of du is just u, well, you have a plus, plus a constant here, right? Plus c. And that's, that's exactly what I just did. Okay, and the integral of zero, uh, well, it's an indefinite integral, so it's just some, some constant, uh, it, it can just be some simple constant if you if you like. Um, but we don't really care. We have a constant from, from here. Anyway, we have x, y is equal to, okay, c1 and c2. Let's just roll that into one, one constant. And then we have y, so we still divide both sides by x, is c over x. And that's the exact same solution that we saw from our previous example. Okay, so this technique uh, of using basically different versions of the product rule, okay? So there, you know, the product rule can be used. We have a quotient rule, which is, again, based on the product rule. Uh, so the, the, the doing this, so taking your differential equation and simplifying by going by going this way, okay, with these, def these different... Uh, we call these integrating combinations. So we use integrating combinations to simplify our differential equation into one that can be integrable. Okay, and that will be the topic of the next video.